Hi, good afternoon everyone. So today I want to talk about lymphoma. There are a lot of lymphatic cancers out there, but today we want to understand exactly what lymphoma is. <clears throat> if we know anyone suffering from lymphatic cancers, the term of a lymph node being affected is most commonly known to us. Well, today I want to tell you that the root cause of lymphoma is nothing but backed up cellular waste that causes the lymph nodes to expand and swell up. So then you go to the doctor and you have a swollen lymph node. You do a biopsy of that and it's obviously toxic because it contains toxins and they show you fast dividing cells. And then the next thing is a surgery to remove your lymph nodes, which is apparently a lymphatic cancer. We need to understand that the lymphatic system is the body's sewage disposal system. <clears throat> it is the garbage disposal system of the human body. And if we do not keep this lymphatic system clean, we get lymphomas. Our body gets more and more acidic. So what exactly is the lymphatic system? The lymphatic system is a collection of, you know, a whole amount of vessels, a thin web of vessels just below your skin. And it has a job of carrying out cellular waste from your body, cellular toxins from your cells. And it works in conjunction with your circulatory system, which is your blood. So basically your lymphatic system carries toxic cellular waste, also called lymph. <clears throat> it carries it to your circulatory system and out of the human body. Now because of lifestyle and certain things that we do, this system gets clogged up and then your lymph nodes swell up. Now we have over 600 to 700 different lymph nodes all over our body, between our groin area, our, under our arms, our throat, our lungs, our heart, below our skin, along our legs, along our arms and our, in our intestines as well. <clears throat> all of these lymph nodes have a function, they act like little gateways. These little gateways allow toxins to pass through. But when these gateways are clogged up because of cellular waste, because of the inability of the lymphatic system to drain out all that excess lymphotoxins, what happens is those lymph nodes start to swell and swell and swell. It's like a clogged up drain. You know, if you don't clean out the drain, the drain's going to overflow. So what happens is the drain swells up with more and more waste and then it starts overflowing. That's exactly what happens in your body when your lymph nodes swell up. So it doesn't warrant a surgery immediately. We need to be given time to go home and clean your lymphatic system, get that drainage system to work the right way. And once that starts working the right way, you'll find automatically that your lymph nodes start decreasing in size. Because you can surgically remove one, two, three, four, five, maybe even 10 lymph nodes, but that doesn't mean you've gotten the cancer. That doesn't mean you've taken away the root cause of your lymphatic cancer, of your lymphoma. And sooner or later, you're going to see that more and more lymph nodes get affected. And guess what? Since you've not caught the problem in its root, that cancer can now become a metastatic cancer and move out of your lymphatic system into some of your vital organs like your brain, your liver, your kidney, or even your bones. Well, your lymphatic system <clears throat> is made up of your bone marrow. It's made up of your tonsils, your adenoids, your spleen, your thymus, and your lymph nodes. All of these make up your lymphatic system and that's why the body requires them. So before surgically removing tonsils was the easiest thing to do. I mean it happened in unawareness but today if we have a swollen tonsil it is your immunity trying to protect you. Your tonsil flares up so that it can produce more of the immune fighting soldiers to help fight out the virus or bacteria from your body. So unless a swollen tonsil really, really creates a problem, you should never surgically remove it. Likewise with your spleen, likewise with your adenoids, because you're impacting immunity. Your lymphatic system provides a variety of immune functions. Ever looked at your CBC, that's your complete blood work? It has something called your lymphocytes. Lymphocytes is what keeps you healthy. Your immune system generates lymphocytes to attack certain cancer cells, viruses, pathogens, germs, bacteria. So when we go off cutting these particular <clears throat> important organs out of the human body, we actually compromise our immunity and we're left with lower immunity. So basically when it comes to lymphoma, 
And like I mentioned, your bone marrow is part of your lymphatic system. It is part of your immunity. Your bone marrow is where all your red blood cells and a lot of your immune fighting soldiers are generated. So let's, let's give me, let, me, let me give you a quick example of how chemo works. So chemo, cancer are basically fast dividing cells. Cancer cells are fast dividing cells. So chemotherapy is a cytotoxin that enters your system and it is designed to search for these fast dividing cells which are probably cancer cells and kill them. But you also have fast dividing cells, which is your hair, which is why most patients who go through chemotherapy also lose their hair because the cytotoxins in chemotherapy also attacks the fast dividing cells, which are your hair and your hair begins to fall. The other fast dividing cells is your bone marrow. So unfortunately, chemo in its honest attempt to fight your cancer fast dividing cells also starts destroying your bone marrow, which is a fast dividing cell, but which is necessary to produce immune function. And we all know immunity is the only thing that can heal you from cancer and prevent it from coming back again and prevent you from even getting a cancer. So when we compromise bone marrow, which is why it is extremely important, <clears throat> whatever cancer you may have, whether you're going through chemo and radiation, you have to supplement your conventional treatment with the right diet, with the right detoxification, with the right plant-based formulations, with the right lifestyle, with the right way of thinking, which is stress and emotional release. It is so important that you do not run a conventional cancer treatment alone because the cancer will come back as a metastatic cancer because you are not supporting your immunity. You are not managing the collateral damage of the conventional treatment in its honest attempt to fight the cancer, but you are losing out on immunity and organ health. So let's talk about the lymphatic system right now. How do you keep it clean? Unlike your circulatory system, if your circulatory system stops working, guess what? You die. <clears throat> if your heart cannot pump blood, you die because your circulatory system carries blood and blood carries oxygen and the nutrients from the food that you eat to all those billion cells that keeps you alive. Now, unfortunately, or fortunately, your circulatory system has your heart, which works as a pump to send blood all through your body. Your lymphatic system doesn't come with a pump. Your lymphatic system gets activated and works only with movement. Movement. Let me say that again. Movement. Basically, your musculoskeletal system has to be activated with movement for your lymphatic system to work. So when you move, your lymphatic system works. So the number one point to keep your lymphatic system healthy, and especially if you have a cancer or you don't have a cancer, the more you move, the more your lymphatic system circulates, which means the cellular waste, which is in all our bodies every second of the day, but is being circulated around and out, of your body can happen only when your lymphatic system is activated. So the number one tip is movement. What are some of the best movements for this? Walking, yoga, stretching, any jump exercise, which brings me to rebounding. If you have a mini trampoline or a large trampoline, jumping for a few minutes every single day on a trampoline will activate and is one of the best ways to activate your lymphatic system. But you don't have to run out and get a trampoline, although it is suggested that you have a trampoline because it's a lot of fun for you to jump on a trampoline and it's a great exercise for your kids as well. And kids love to jump on trampoline. It stimulates their lymphatic system, which in turn stimulates your immunity. And immunity is everything when it comes to cancer, healing and prevention. Now, if you don't have a trampoline, walking, brisk walking is good enough for you. Yoga, stretching or even jumping, jumping jacks, imaginary skipping, anything that revolves <clears throat> the sole of your foot to hit down onto the ground. I'm not saying hit in an intensive manner, but hit. So walking, every time you take a step, okay, the sole of your foot hits the ground, your lymphatic system gets stimulated, which is why a sedentary lifestyle is so bad for you. It is so bad for your immunity. And even if you're a patient or you have a cancer, it is extremely important that you move. Even if it's assisted moving with someone holding onto you, you take a few steps every single day so that you can stimulate your immune system. The second point, breathing, deep breathing from your diaphragm. When you inhale to your lungs full capacity, 
your lungs expand and your lungs press against your thoracic duct, which is situated right up here. Your thoracic duct then gets that push to push fluid out from there into your circulatory system and out of your body. Your thymus, your thoracic duct, these are all parts of the lymphatic system. When you stimulate them, you stimulate removal of lymph from your body. So the simple act of deep breathing, so you take a deep breath, expand your lungs, you can hold for a couple of seconds, and then you exhale completely and deflate your lungs. So when you exhale longer than your inhale, you actually take in more oxygen to stimulate your lymphatic system. So again, I keep saying it on all of my videos, the power of your breath, the power of deep breathing. The more you breathe, the more you stimulate your lymphatic system. That brings me to my third point, which is <clears throat> dry brushing. Take a brush which has natural bristles and you stroke your legs, your chest, your neck areas in an upward motion with that brush. Dry brushing stimulates your lymphatic system, which is why massages also stimulate your lymphatic system. And it could be a normal relaxation massage to a deep tissue massage. All of these massages can stimulate your lymphatic system to drain itself of cellular waste. And then of course, it always comes down to nutrition. So if you wanna clean out your lymphatic system, you eat ripe fruits, three to four of them in a day, soaked nuts, almonds, walnuts, peanuts, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, flax seeds. All of this stimulates your lymphatic system to drain out. You make sure you're drinking the right amount of water because even a 1% drop of your water intake compromises your lymphatic system because the fluid, your lymph fluid that drains out cellular waste is nothing but water. Your blood is nothing but water. So you need sufficient water. When we keep eating junk food and all of these salty foods, your body starts retaining water because it's holding on to the water that salt and excess sodium is displacing from your body. So make sure you're drinking the right amount of good, clean drinking water to stimulate your lymphatic system. If you're going through a lymphoma right now, or you're going through a cancer, it's a good idea to give up animal, meat, and dairy for one to two weeks because that helps you stimulate and re-clean your, your, your body's garbage disposal system, which is your lymphatic system. Because you know what? Meat makes you acidic and excess lymph in your body makes you acidic. So when your lymphatic system is not working out and working properly, all that backed up cellular waste makes your body more and more acidic. And guess what? Cancer cells breed in an acidic environment. So we need to release that acidic medium from your body by keeping your lymphatic system clean. <clears throat> I know this is not much spoken about, but it all comes down to elimination at the end of the day. We've all seen the power of detoxification when it comes to your liver, your lungs, your kidney, your bowel. We've all seen how people watching these videos have lost four to five kilos of fat only by detoxifying their livers. We see it every day that when patients with cancer start eliminating, detoxifying, keeping their lymphatic systems cleaner, they start feeling healthier and stronger and they go into remission and they stay into remission. You can have the most complex treatment in the world, but it comes back to the laws of nature, the laws of the human body, which is if you keep your body clean of toxins, you create an environment where disease cannot breed. And if you have a disease and you start cleaning up your system, guess what? You start healing. A bacteria doesn't kill you or cause disease unless you have the soil in your body to let the bacteria grow. For example, mucus. So if you have excess mucus in your lungs, a bacteria could become anything from a viral infection to a TB or tuberculosis. So you provide the environment. All of us are breeding in germs and pathogens every single day. All of us have cancer cells in our body growing all the time. But it is that environment in our body. It is the terrain, the terrain of our body that will allow the manifestation or the expression of that bacteria or pathogen or that cancer cell into the real disease. Keep your lymphatic system clean. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep. Have a good day, everyone.